hope you're ready for a four-day weekend. Thank you for spending one more. Yeah, you want to give a big round of applause for that? Let's go ahead and begin. We're going to sing our school song together. If children of liberty will ask you to stand while we do that. Jenny Burr, who has been a parent of our Vacation Bible School for now three years. I think she's been best known for her production of this school song for our school choir. Following which, and our choir, the Young Adults Choir. Following which we will have an invitation to be offered by Kirsten Allison and then Pledge of Allegiance by our Mabel Allison Choir. So thank you. Go ahead and rise for Children of Liberty. This evening as parents and as school teachers and staff to uh, be beginning this new school year with these precious children. And we ask you to bless us that we can get on the right foot and make this a good experience for each child, that they will feel of thy love for them, that they will feel the more of their purpose in life and that they have a plan. wise and follow the promptings of the spirit to know how to best love and teach and lead these children and help them become instruments in thy hands to usher in the second coming and we ask for these blessings in Jesus Christ's name. In honor of God and our country, please rise and say the Pledge of Allegiance with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, David and Jenny and Donna. And that was Mary Kay Ware, not Kirsten Monson. We had a pinch hitter. Thank you, Mary Kay. Well, we hope that you enjoyed your classroom orientations. Did anyone have sweaty palms, feel a little bit nervous about going back to school? Did, were you raising your hands, all that stuff? Okay, all those flood of emotions coming back. We uh, are going to begin uh, this evening by hearing from our parent organization president, our new parent organization president, Shannon Brown parent service organization, and she'll tell you a little bit about that name change. Uh, I just want to say that uh, I am personally, and we are so grateful to Shannon and her whole family for taking on this invitation. It is a big job, as you'll come to find out if you're new to the school or old to the school. And so uh, we will also, following Shannon here from our parent 
chair of the uh, 2017 auction and gala, uh, Chrissy Sperry. So both of these uh, women are behind the scenes doing a lot of things at the school. Let's give them a big round of applause, first Shannon and then Chrissy. I'm not quite so tall. <laughs> Um, thank you for having me tonight. Um, as, as he said, my name is Shannon Brown, and I'm uh, new to the position of president of the, of the PSO, we're calling it this year. So when Grant called me, Mr. Beckwith called me in June and asked me to take this position, um, I have been a PTA president before and a parent organization president before, and I just wanted to make it clear, if you're coming from a public school setting or other school setting, uh, we're different from that. We don't, we don't collect dues, we don't raise funds, and we... Um, we don't have like a, a national structure or anything like that. It was just in-house, okay? So I chose the name Parent Service Organization because I wanted to accentuate the component of service that we are giving as an organization. So um, this is my family. I have six children and two grandchildren. And I have the three oldest kids are, are grown and gone and married. And then I have a son who graduated from here last year and he's going on a mission to the Philippines in November. And so, um, and I have two girls left here at the school. So we have been here, this will be our fourth year at American Heritage, and miracles have happened in our family because of being here and uh, the, the great faculty and staff and people that have touched the lives of my children. So my son's mission is a direct result of, of being here. Okay, let's see if I can, oh, wrong way, okay. So we talked about parent service organization. And I'm just kind of the, the poster child for that. I have a great bunch of, of people that are the team behind me. So this is the board that I have. Uh, Laura Hale is my secretary. And Lonnie Cobb, Krista MacArthur, Dallas Harris, and Melanie Sorensen. And they are my board members. And, and the, the events that are underneath their names are the ones that they are in charge of. And I don't have pictures of all the team leads, but then there's team leads of each of these events. And then underneath that, we have you know, room parents and other people that are all involved, so I'm just kind of the captain of the team of, of you, <laughs> okay? So I appreciate all of the time that you're, that you're giving in this um, organization. So I just wanted to, instead of talking about you know, why we or how we volunteer and the logistics of you know, the website and everything, I wanna talk about why we volunteer. So as I was preparing for tonight, I got on the website and I was looking at you know, our mission statement and about our culture and things like that. And one of the things that's in a little video clip that says, um, sacrifice makes, uh, service makes sacred. And so this is another quote by Russell M. Ballard that he taught the word sacrifice li means literally to make sacred. And I feel like American Heritage School is an extension of our homes. Our homes are sacred places, right? They are our temples, literally. And, and our children spend so much time here at American Heritage School that um, this is an extension of that sacred place. And so through your volunteerism, you are, are, are giving of your time and your talents. A lot of us, you know, we have various resources that are available to us, and most of us live fairly comfortably, but the one thing that we always seem to be a little short of is, is our time. Um, this is another quote from Joseph Smith, and he just, in, you know, paraphrasing this, he just talks about how when we do give service, it not only blesses us, but it blesses the whole. And that's kind of what you do as volunteers here. So it's not just your children, but all of our children. So we're working in this together. And as I mentioned, the thing that we're probably feeling like we're just all so busy, the thing that's probably the, the top commodity for us is our time. And so I know that I'm asking a lot by asking you to volunteer and help out, but this is a precious resource, and I hope that you'll find time to give. Now, we're each asked as a family to give 30 hours cumulatively per year. And um, so, you know, you think about all the things you could be doing with your time, but just knowing that the teachers and the faculty here are giving so much of their time and resources personally to bless our children's lives that 30 hours is actually not a lot in the whole scheme of things. And so... Um, if you would just be willing to look at our, this is how the, the you know, the web page looks. If you go to American-Heritage.org, this is a, the web page. If you look down here, you'll see our, 
our new logo for the Parent Service Organization. Angela Davidson helped me design this, and it's the little hands with the, the giving hands with a little heart, and they're just accentuating again. The reason why we give is because we love our children and the other children that are here. So if you click on that, you'll see um, this is our PSO page, and at the bottom, you can see we have the service opportunities. And so when you click on that, there's a whole slew of things you can get involved in. Um, probably some of our biggest needs are the lunchroom. So I decided to test it out this week and I went in and helped Miss Bigelow with that and I lived to tell the tale. So it, wasn't, it was relatively painless. Uh, it was actually a pretty good workout. I came out of there, you know, kind of huffing and puffing after wiping down tables. So it's a workout. You can just skip the P90X and come right to the lunchroom. <laughs> so anyway, that's just, if, if you would just pick one day you know, I think we could just fill it up like that, but it's just hard to sometimes break away in the middle of the day and come over, I know that, but if you could just maybe do one, that'd be great. Um, another thing that uh, is kind of the, the hottest fire is Constitution Day. So that's coming up on September 14th, and this is a really neat opportunity. So if you wanna bring anybody from the community, friends, family, they have um, people dressed up in costume, and they, they represent different um, people like Founding Fathers, so we have Abraham Lincoln, Martha Washington, different people, they dress up and the kids as a class, they rotate through this little cycle and they learn about the stories of these Founding Fathers and, and other great Americans. So this is a great chance to invite people that may be interested in learning more about our school and a great way to kick off the year as we pay homage to these great Americans. And um, so if you look at the top, you can RSVP by clicking on that tab. And then um, we need helpers to set up the flag. So at 7 a.m., if you're on your way to work, dads, and you want to help just drive some rebar in for the flags, we have about 60 flags. So, you know, we got to get those in, do our little thing. And then if you want to come around with your kids and do the rotation, that's a, a nice time to be with them as well. So that's a fun event coming up. And um, Angela said she will have the rotation schedule up by this evening. So it'll be on the bottom of the page. You'll be able to see exactly which grades are rotating to which station at what time. Okay, and the next really fun event that we have is just kind of a fun night. This is um, the fall festival, and we hadn't done it for a little while, so we just want to remind you that, that we're doing it again, and we're, it's a time for you as your family to come and just have fun together and get to know other families here at the school. So um, you can look on here. By the end of this, let's see, the September 4th, so Tuesday night when you get back from Labor Day break, that's the end of the early bird sign-up price, ticket price, okay? So if you get on between now and Tuesday night, you can get the cheaper price. So we encourage you all to come. I mean, we feel like we've tried to keep the cost really low. Right now, it's $4 a person or $25 for your family, and that includes a meal and all the fun and games. So it'll be a great time to get to know each other and kick off the year in a fun way. So, um, yeah, I just... Um, I'm gonna turn the time to Chrissy, but I just wanna say thank you so much for supporting me by coming out and, and getting involved with all these events. There's just so many opportunities, and if you can't come to campus, there's actually at-home service projects that can be signed up for. And um, Kathy Bay, she, <coughs> excuse me, she's over our room parents, and so um, she had a meeting this morning with those, those ladies, and they're just ready to hit the ground running. So we hope that you'll just dig in and get involved with us, and we're excited to get to know you, I am personally. So just come up and say hi, and if you feel like you have questions or concerns, just feel free to email me, and I'll be happy to help you in any way. Thank you. We are so lucky that Shannon is our new parent service organization leader. I have been able to work with her, and she's fantastic. So if you don't know her, get to know her. She's incredible, and we're really blessed to have her. Um, I get to talk about the gala. I love this event. We, my name's Chrissy Sperry. My family's been here at the school now for eight years, and I have been on the gala committee for six years, and I said that I would be the chair this year. So that's how much I love it. I love the gala. It is our annual fundraiser for the year. And um, we have a live auction and a silent auction, and there are plenty of needs and plenty of ways for all of you to be involved and be excited. We just 
came from our parent orientation, or our classroom orientation, and we all know how wonderful our teachers are. The gala is a fundraiser benefiting our students and our teachers. All of the funds that we raise go directly towards them, and we have the best teachers ever in this school. So it's fun to be involved in helping them and the children also. Um, this is a picture of a table at the night of the event. It's kind of a fancy, fun night. We're going to have David Osman this year singing for us, which will be fun. And we also have um, our, the Mighty Baker, who I don't know if you're familiar with. He won Cake Wars two seasons in a row. He will be auctioning off a cake decorating class and he will be, will be eating his cheesecake for dessert. It's going to be super fun. How many of you have been to a gala before? Isn't it awesome? Just the feeling of love and coming together and the support of our teachers is great. I would invite all of you to be at the gala this year if you're able. It is really fun and um, such a great night. So these are some ways that you can be involved and in how we might need your help. Number one, attend the gala. Um, donate an item for the live or silent auction. We're always looking for donations. The committee's been busy approaching businesses this summer trying to gather donations, but if you know of a business, you have your little gala flyer in your envelope that you just received at check-in, you can take that to business managers or owners that you know and ask for a donation or purchase something and donate it. Um, also a gala sponsorship in that same packet. There is information about sponsorships that may be interesting to you. We would love sponsors, so that's another way you can be involved. And then when we have all of our items don't participating in the silent auction, we always have a lot of fun baskets and things to bid on. This is open, not only, the live auction is open to those who are in attendance the night of the gala, um, but the silent auction is open to the whole community. We want you to invite your friends and you to bid on the items. It's a really fun offering of things that all of us have brought together to make these baskets. So right here, you can see the gala is right on the bottom, the flyer. You can click there to purchase your tickets. Um, me and Angela's names are on there. We would love for you to contact us to see how you can help. There's flyers in the lobby for you to sign up if you're interested in helping. And is that all? <laughs> so this is what's in your packet. We have this little folder. It has a letter from Grant that can explain kind of our fundraiser and what it's about. You can take to businesses. There's the sponsorship explanations in there, a lot of good, fun advertising opportunities for businesses that may be interested in that, and you get to come to the gala. There's tickets included in most of our sponsorship packages. And here is a bunch of auction donation items that we would love for you to consider donating. These are things that have been successful and interesting things for people to bid on in the past. So. We would, this is our website where you can sign up for our gala sponsorship packages. All of it's online this year and we have it ready for you tonight. Um, we are grateful to David for being willing to entertain us a little bit that night. We will also have an excerpt, a scene from Fiddler on the Roof, which is always really fun, getting ready for our fall musical. But we get a little preview of that night. And this is the mighty baker, Pete Tidwell, who is going to be auctioning off his class. It'll be a lot of fun, and we are so excited for all of you to celebrate with us that evening. So we'll see you then. Thank you. We should have had David sing the national anthem instead of the Pledge of Allegiance, right? Next time. Okay, this is Angela. You've met her, you've seen her. She's our Director of Community Relations and Events. Um, Kim Shreve, you should get to know as well. Raise your hand, Kim. She's right there. 
Uh, she helps to coordinate volunteers, and I think we've told you how you can sign up for that, so I won't spend a lot of time on that, but the events team um, is something that you do want to get involved with. We want you to meet Carolee Beckham. She is helping the school with both as a photography instructor, but also um, putting together a photo team. So all of you out there who are amateur or even professional photographers, we could use your pictures. We're going to have a, an actual photo shot list that we're looking for pictures of things, and she's gonna coordinate that. So if you wanna connect with her, Carolee, are you in the room right now? There she is, right there. So find Carolee, and she will help you to be on that team if you'd like to take pictures. I'm going to turn the time now over to David Sterling, who is uh, the chairman of our board of trustees. Uh, many thanks to him, and also Dan Burton is here, who just concluded his three-year term as chairman. Let's give them a big round of applause as they address us on behalf of the board. David. It's a pleasure to be here tonight. and. Uh, an honor to represent the board. In fact, uh, if any of the board of trustees are here, the members are here, would you stand up for just a second so we can recognize you? Please, there we go. We got number. Thank you. You know, I saw that picture of, uh, of Pete Tidwell, and uh, I haven't seen Pete for a number of years. He used to be an employee of mine. And I remember when he came to me uh, a number of years ago and he, he said, he was a creative uh, director for me. <laughs> he came to me a number of years ago and said, it's always been my dream to be a baker. And I thought, really? And uh, he said, I feel like I have to chase this dream. And uh, he did. And so I'm, I was so happy when I began to see him uh, occasionally in the newspaper winning various awards that he's uh, become quite successful at that. I had, had my doubts at the time. That's a tough industry, I think. So. Anyway, uh, it's a pleasure just to share a couple thoughts with you tonight. And, uh, you know, uh, um, this is certainly going to be or has been a monumental year for growth. And the next coming year, the rest of this year in 2018 and 19 are going to be big changes for the school. I think the school always has big changes going on, but, but this is going to be certainly big in the way of construction and projects. And, and uh, there's a lot going on. That construction has begun out here. Um, before this year is out, we'll have tennis courts. And uh, um, I guess that's all we'll have this year, right, is the tennis courts. But early next year, uh, as we get things going, the athletic facilities uh, outdoor will be first, and they'll just be fantastic, and then followed by uh, some great indoor facilities and beyond that, and I know that uh, Grant is going to share a little bit more detail about that uh, a little bit later uh, this evening. But I wanted to uh, just share a couple other thoughts, and maybe just, uh, I'm amazed by, by uh, the, this board that we have, and, and what a pleasure it is to serve on that. Um, I'm, I'm constantly impressed with the level of, uh, of experience, talent, uh, wisdom, creativity, commitment. Uh, that is on this board that we have today for the school. And, and uh, I want each of you to know that uh, each person on there is very dedicated uh, and committed to doing all they can to strengthen the school and to help guide it and help keep it uh, tied firmly to its moorings. As we grow, and as a lot of things will change in the coming years, um, there's, there's a, a concern that perhaps some of this could be lost, but uh, I hope if anybody's feeling that way that you'll rest assured that that should not be a worry, uh, that there's just greater commitment than ever before to stay to those fundamental principles that have built this school and, and the reasons why most of you, if not all of you, are here and have your children here today. Um, just a couple of other thoughts. Uh, we, we seem to live in a society today that that's uh, caught up in a, a fever, almost a feverish bout of me-centrism. And, uh, and, uh, and I think uh, it's something that's causing a lot of people a lot of fear and, and nervousness. It's causing a lot of people to be unsettled. And, and I think uh, many just simply don't know what to do about that. Um, in American heritage, uh, the goal is to be a faith-based education. And there's a tremendous amount of effort that goes into that. And to teach the kids how to serve. 
Um, I think it was uh, Mahatma Gandhi that once said, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. A week and a half ago, I uh, had the pleasure of hosting our new student government at our home and uh, over the weekend as they were planning and getting ready for this coming year. And, and let me tell you, these are fantastic kids. I got to spend just a little bit of time with them and, uh, and just came away thinking, wow, there's, there's some families and some parents that are doing some phenomenal things because uh, these kids are, are really, really unusual. Kids that come away from American Heritage are certainly going to do so with a foundation um, and a appreciation for the creation of this great country and the, the principles upon which it is based, those very important documents, inspiration of founding fathers, um, they will come away with an understanding of that that, that really is not gained in our secular, more secular-based uh, educations in the public systems today. Um, that's one of the things I've loved um, to see in my kids as they've come away with a real appreciation for that. Many years ago, 1998, I remember reading a book, some of you might have be familiar with, uh, was written by Tom Brokaw called The Greatest Generation. And uh, Tom Brokaw, for those of you who might not be familiar with him, was a, uh, a, a renowned, respected, revered um, national news anchor. And uh, he, he went and, and interviewed uh, for a number of years uh, World War II veterans and people who simply lived through this area. And, uh, and it was very interesting, the conclusions that he came, to, he came up with in this book. In fact, I would say they were both inspirational and unsettling a little bit at the same time. And uh, the, the amazing part is, is uh, he concluded that that generation that had that had lived through the Depression, gone on to fight in World War II, and then after that uh, went on to help build a country and a nation that became a, the largest economic power and, and world leader uh, uh, that I think the world's almost ever seen in the United States. And he concluded that this generation was the greatest generation, in his opinion, that the world has ever produced. And then he, by comparison, went on to, to say that, uh, that our generation today, he did not believe could do what they did. And, uh, and this was based primarily upon attributes that seemed to be widespread and much more prevalent in that generation that simply seemed to be not as widespread and not as prevalent in our, in our uh, society today. So. You know, as I read that and, and, uh, and, and pondered that and was reminded of that book just recently, I just thought that is one of the things that uh, American Heritage does, is we're trying to build and strengthen a few future generation that will go on, that will have those attributes uh, similar to that generation that did so much for us um, back in that time era. We all know that there's... Uh, much that lies ahead and uh, much that uh, many storms the weather going forward and uh, these kids will come out of here with a vision an expectation of themselves to be leaders and an expectation to impact I think the world for good I know each of us has our own personal story for how we've arrived here at American Heritage um, some of those stories are, are, are pretty amazing I've heard a number of them but I think we come together with uh, a collective set of desires and values and hopes um, for what will happen here with our children at this school. I want to assure you that uh, the Board of Trustees and the administration here is very, very committed to this vision and uh, looking forward to a fantastic year this year. Thank you. I've worked with a number of boards in my life, uh, including um, currently, um, and I, I just have to say that this board is one of the most unified in vision, supportive of each other, um, talented, and just overall high-functioning boards that, that I've ever worked with. It's just really a pleasure and an honor. Okay, well, um, my name is Grant Beckwith, principal. For any of you that haven't met me, I. 
there's, th as we grow, there are so many families that I just can't wait to have come to my office so I can sit and listen to you. But I hope to get a chance to meet you in the hallways. Uh, David, this group of students that you had to your home really is an extraordinary student government association. This is the picture of some of the work that they did there. Uh, they went over to a river close by and pulled out a bridge. They were working really, really hard and late. Mr. Hymas, one of our high school teachers, is the, um, the mentor for them. And I was looking at this picture. I mean, this was clear into the night that they were working on this. And I thought over, I recognized a face that wasn't like the others, and so I zoomed in, and there was David out there lifting that bridge and wood and everything, getting wet and muddy with all of them. And I thought, that's just, that's just so like David and so like many of our board members who are not on some kind of hill and tower looking down on everyone, but just right down there with everyone else lifting and serving. And it's a beautiful thing. That's, that's part of the culture of American Heritage School. The student government, while they were working and bonding and serving and thinking and planning, decided that they would theme each semester, or sorry, each term this year. And they chose these four themes. The first term would be unity. The second term would be charity. The third would be motivation. That third term is sort of the death march of March, you know. They just... And the fourth term then would be Be the Change, which was sort of the summative theme that they had on their t-shirts and everything else. This is an incredible group of young men and young women who will change not just our school community, but their worlds in significant ways. It has been of just an over, almost an overflowing kind of emotion as we've come back to school, meeting everyone, reunions, but also saying goodbye. Uh, this is Earl. If you've read some of the emails and, and goodbyes to him, our custodian. This is one of our faculty members who really typifies the mission of American Heritage School. As busy as he was with everything, everyone felt like Earl was their best friend. One student who was new to the school said and wrote a note to Earl that said, you know, I came into school and Earl said, we need you here, and just felt so welcome and like they belonged. Earl's um, funeral service will be tomorrow at 11. Uh, there will be a viewing at 10 for anyone that want to join. Uh, but we will miss him greatly. Okay, this is a required meeting. Uh, on Veracross, if you'll go down to the bottom of the parent portal, you will see these parent resource links, and there is the link to click on to record that you have attended. Uh, if you are going to have pizza, there's the link to sign up for your children's pizza. Same place. There's lots of good links there. The, the handbook, parent handbook, can be found there. And calendars. We've given you a calendar in your packet here. We print a hard copy for you occasionally throughout the year, and it is probably outdated the moment we print it for you, as many things are going on here as we grow, so we encourage you to use the online calendars. Also, the counseling office, just another housekeeping item here. Please note, those of you who have high school children, that we no longer require biology, chemistry, physics in that order as a graduation requirement. We only require three credits of science, and, you, and we, as we've offered more and more science classes in different kinds, we added medical anatomy and physiology this year, an intro to engineering, uh, another AP class. You may choose any of those in any order to graduate. And that's, so that's not in the letter, we're just telling you that now, and our counseling office will help you and your children understand that. Uh, so please be advised of that. Okay. Uh, to bring all of us up to speed, especially those who weren't here last year, this is a picture of our board meeting at its back-to-school board meeting in August of 2016. Board members, you'll remember this. We went out on the field. We still had not acquired all of the land that we needed for our master plan. But we felt a certain excitement and a spirit and a momentum. We had a poster. We were pretty sure that, we, you know, we were pretty clear on what our vision was, <laughs> but it was just a poster. And 
we knew that building buildings was the easy part. That building culture and building people is always the harder part, especially as we're growing quickly. And we've been growing quickly for the last three decades. And so even as we were planning our physical growth, we were spending even more time planning our cultural growth and strengthening mission roots. And so some of our board members and many of you on the development committee were focused on this vision clarification effort, values clarification at the school. This is a unique kind of, of, of place to go to school. If you sat in the classrooms tonight, you probably had this instinct of, boy, wouldn't it be nice to come back to school? Wouldn't it be nice to come back here to school? These values are not just window dressing. You will come to know that they matter. They matter at deep levels, and they will play out in programs. They will play out in, in communication and processes. So we were working on strengthening our culture, our mission culture. Even as we were looking at the poster saying, how will we grow physically? And then in the spring of 2017, we had enough land and we had enough momentum that we could do a groundbreaking. We had enough money that we could build the tennis courts. <laughs> so we decided to go ahead and break ground. <laughs> and we did. And that was a beautiful and exciting occasion. Many of you were there. And at this time, the board was also starting to talk about trends, larger trends in the country, larger trends in Utah. One of those trends is that there was a shortage of teachers. Where are we going? How are we going to not only keep our best talent, but find additional mission-centered kind of teachers that we're looking for for this kind of school and culture? And the board started to focus on three priorities. And these are them, these are they, sorry English teachers. And that number one, product leadership, is about maintaining and attracting the right people. And the people that we have here are truly extraordinary. I mean, look at, you know these names, right? You know, these, you know the impact that these teachers have had on your and my children. And to look into these faces and what they've done and what they've sacrificed to be here. Yes, this is Alex DeBurke. And yes, he is our physics teacher who does have a beard card. He is in a Book of Mormon video. Those Book of Mormon videos are going to be terrific and a very talented physics teacher in addition to a thespian. 12 out of, 11 out of 12 of our AP physics students passed the AP exam under Mr. DeBurke's tutelage last year. Yeah, pretty incredible. One of the most difficult AP exams out there. And others. How do we keep this kind of talent these kinds of hearts and minds in an environment where there's a severe shortage of teachers. They could teach just about anywhere. Uh, one parent who was applying to the school said to me that a local public school was putting over 50 kindergarten students per class in a room and that they still didn't have all their first grade teachers. Three teachers short in first grade a week before school started. It's, it's pretty desperate out there. And yet we have some of the most extraordinary talent on the planet. This, if you know Jay Clark, he's not just a tech guy. He was actually responsible for writing and producing Savior of the World. And if you have any children who are in tech crew or in drama, you know how he inspires them and how he loves to be a teacher, not just a producer. So the board began asking in the finance committee and our executive committee, how do we really keep this kind of talent and attract it? And this is the kind of thing that we decided we needed to do, drawing on some of the best practices out there in human resources management. We need to be able to create a place where our teachers can live, they can love, they can learn, and they can leave a legacy. 
This is like Luke 2, verse 42, that, that, that balance wheel of, of, of healthy human beings. Physical, intellectual, spiritual, social, emotional. We've got, we've got to give them all of that here. How do we do that? Well, in Foundations Training Week, we said to our teachers, there's going to be some very specific initiatives that we are going to go through to help you as teachers to feel like this is a place where you can stay, you can thrive, you can love, be passionate about what you're doing, you can learn, we will train you. We've got a teacher development and curriculum committee, raise your hand if you're on that committee, who is very dedicated to helping our teachers in their professional development. There's a mentoring program this year, a teacher coaching program, and encouraging our teachers to view the classroom experience not as a one-size-fits-all, but as customized learning. That our children come at so many different thresholds. And how do we meet them at that threshold? And helping teachers and coaching them to understand some of those kinds of approaches. This is the spirit of the one-room schoolhouse, which is so powerful. And then trying to find new talent that would fit this culture. This is Ryan Anderson. You're going to hear from him a little bit later tonight. We had a little bit of a surprise before we end this meeting. Ryan came to us from Tuacon High School, where he was an administrator for seven years, a science teacher. He's now teaching anatomy and physiology here. Um, but he's also an actor. What is it about our science teachers who are actors? He's going to do an excerpt from the British pageant tonight for you. So you can get a sense of what extraordinary and deep mission-rooted people some of these new hires are. Here's Rochelle Packer, long and rich experience in reading and reading intervention and reading strategies. Her father did this at BYU. Their whole family is focused on the power of the word. Kindergarten teacher, brilliant kindergarten teacher. Those of you that have her or are getting to know her already, I'm sure this is not news to you. Jeff Beck, the new chair of our World Languages program. I could just go on and on and on about some of these new, new hires that we have who have been attracted to this mission and who we need to keep. Priority number two, an intentional culture of physical and emotional wellness and health. Of course, people also are going to be at the foundation of this effort. This is Brian Smith, our new athletic director who is really responsible for helping us to expand this campus and all that we're going to do in the physical arts area. But not just athletics and PE, but also social and emotional and spiritual wellness. Our board spent a significant amount of time on that. Now, of course, we've talked about physical safety and security, and we take that very seriously. Uh, these are some of the things that we do that we show you each year that we do and remind you and we try to get better at that. We had, a, we had a security audit this past summer where someone came in and just said, okay, walk us through. What are all of your physical controls? What are all of your cyber controls? Here's Mr. Wheeler. A drill in one hand and a taser in the other. <laughs> Mr. Wheeler has long and, and significant experience in law enforcement, as well as first responding. He was an officer for the uh, Los Angeles Police, or San Diego, I'm sorry, Bob, Bob's here. San Diego, right, Bob? Uh, we do have multiple members of our security committee who are trained. We, we do have firearms and do training in firearms, active shooter response, so that we have a team here if something like that were ever to happen. There probably will be a um, lockdown drill again this year. We follow all of those best practices for physical and campus safety. This is an aerial view of our building. Here are the crosswalks. Please encourage your children to use them. Please do not load your children in the middle of carpool traffic lanes. If you're parked on the opposite side of sidewalks. If you're not adjacent to a sidewalk, please do not encourage your children to run across carpool traffic lanes. Of course, there's lots of construction going on now, and the children love to get close to that fence. We are going to keep reminding them not to climb it. When their balls go into the construction area, not to chase those balls. You can help us. I also like to go out there and just watch. This is really cool. This is big machinery, right? It's exciting. 
we had a we had a conversation with the contractors just today where the, uh, we asked you know could we maybe do some experiential learning? You know, maybe there's some things in physics or in construction that our students could learn. They said, absolutely. So we might take advantage of this construction as a learning process and experiential learning for some of our students. But not just physical safety, emotional safety and wellness as well. Here are three of our alumni who were just here for a concert that we had. What we care most about, I think I can say as parents is that yes, our, our children are physically safe and secure, but also that they have this sense of balance in their life about things that matter most. And when they look in the mirror, and this came out in spades at our board meeting, when they look in the mirror, they see a reflection and say, I am worth living. One of the other trends that is just heartbreaking is that suicide continues to climb across the country, teen suicide especially, in Utah. To date, 2007, 2017 has been the most deadly for Utah yet. They've got to feel self-worth. We've got to help them understand this. And here are some of the things that the board talked about just three weeks ago, including Doctrine and Covenants section 121. Let virtue garnish thy thoughts unceasingly, and then shall thy confidence wax strong in the Lord. And DNC section 78. I could just hear LaDon reading this for us at the board table. Board members, did this, did this just echo in your mind and heart as well? That you can't bear all things now. Nevertheless, be of good cheer. I will lead you along. The blessings of eternity are yours. Our children must understand and see the vision of who they are and what their future is. It must be okay to fail. It must be okay to fail gracefully for them. Grades cannot matter that much. And by the way, you'll see in this letter that the board responded with some specific policy too. So our homework policy is also intended to, to create some more balance at home. If we're going to give homework, let's make sure it's meaningful. Less homework, but more meaningful homework. You can take a look at that policy as it's drafted now. Um, and some other things targeted emotional wellness. And mission aligned growth. So this is the picture that you and we have seen. We have a fence right now that kind of cuts across here, so things are getting tighter before they will actually get looser and expand. Please be patient. Uh, we had hoped to have more of this done by Christmas time. It's going to be more like May or June before the stadium is done. But we are confident that this will be done in summer of 2018, all of that, including the athletic center in time to open our doors in 2018. This will be an incredible campus. Uh, you're, we're looking at, all told, land, buildings, we're looking at about a $30 million picture. So for any of us who are feeling a little bit like, you know, our expectations weren't met and we were hoping to have all this done by Christmas, Let's be patient. This will be a part of our future for decades. A few months to get this right, and we have had some delays with contracting, and there have been some things where we subcontractor prices were higher than we thought. We had to negotiate those. Some of you have seen this picture of the athletic facility. This will be updated, but there will be a very large hole just north of us. Now, physical growth, as we said, I speed through that too fast. Some of you were smiling like, oh, okay, there it went. This is a view from inside of the new athletic center. How many, how many gyms out there have a view of the temple? But also creating teams of people as we grow. This is, this is our science, three of our science and math teachers in a team. There's a, there's a certain amount of gravitas that comes as we grow. And here they are. You can probably recognize what they're doing. Uh, in the path of totality in Idaho. High-tech equipment. 
I shared this picture with you just so that you know that STEM is also a focus um, and not at the expense of our language arts and our fine arts programs. We are not de-emphasizing those programs. Our campus master plan calls for a beautiful fine arts center, a world-class fine arts center. It's coming. It's a lot of work still for us and fundraising, but it's coming. Here's one of our music arts teachers practicing his own eclipse viewing skills. I'm not sure if that worked or not, but these certainly worked. I think these were Sam Woods, our math department chair's pictures, and right as we got, you could take off the lenses. It was just incredible. This mission is larger than all of us. And we do have a well to keep full. We are all drinking from that well. It's a well that we have not dug. And as we pass along this way, for us to keep it full is important. Uh, we do have some work to do in raising money. This is a nonprofit organization. We can't just go out and debt finance a couple million dollars to pay our people more or to build buildings. And this mission matters. You've heard me say before, you've heard our board say before, that American heritage and its mission changes and saves lives. And I was thinking about that as we were listening to this just beautiful, overwhelmingly beautiful concert that was done by our youth chorus last week. Those of you that were, were there know what I'm talking about. And they were singing this song about love and the love of Christ. And I was thinking to myself, you know, it is hard work to raise money. It is hard work to run a private school. It is hard work to, to do all of this independently of a huge district system and to do it well. But what's interesting is, as I look out here, that work that we're doing that fundraising, all of that hard lifting, is not just for this group of families and, and our own children. The love that this choir was singing about and the service and the sacrifice is blessing thousands and maybe hundreds of thousands of lives out there because of the kind of families and children that come here. You don't have to raise your hands, but if I asked you if I asked you to raise your hands, how many of you are involved with, with foundations or humanitarian service projects locally and internationally? These kinds of real needs, you could think about Houston, you could think about Ghana, you could think about South America, the Philippines. I could just keep listing all of the countries that our school blesses directly and our students because of you and what you do. This is not an insular community that is looking inward at itself. This is a community that blesses thousands and hundreds of thousands. And so when we ask for this kind of help, this isn't just for us. American Heritage School changes and saves lives around the world. Okay, well, let's conclude, and then we'll do some Q&A. Um, we are going to now... Uh, have Alex and Ryan come onto the stage. I think Joanne is performing with them as well. Uh, following which, we will have a closing prayer which will be offered by Annie Zolman. Annie's right here. She's ready to go. Thank you for spending an hour with us tonight. We have not gone through everything in this packet that we probably planned to go through. Lots of policies to review, lots of principles we could have covered, um, will you please commit to just reading this? I think the most important thing that, that, the most important things we have covered, the why of what we do, not just the what or the how. So here's an excerpt from the British pageant. Again, a reflection of who we are and why we are, following which we'll have a closing prayer offered by Annie Zolman. Alex, Ryan, and Joanne, over to you. Thank you for joining American Heritage School. Let's give them a big round of applause. <clears throat> oh, hello.
My name is Arthur, Arthur Ashton, and we've just come from the boat. <laughs> and don't I know you? Yes, from Reno, Nevada. Or rather, I knew your great-grandmother. She was with us in Liverpool, seeing off her family. <laughs> and she'll be coming after. And you, from Pocatello, Idaho. I knew your great-grandfather in Lancashire. He worked in the mines he did. <laughs> We're family. You see that, don't you? No? Well, you will. But we've come to talk all about that, your story and mine. It's a story about planting the seed of truth and letting the light of God's love bring forth the fruit. And that's what happened to me. In 1837, my daughter Sarah, she come home on fire talking nonsense about some prophet in America. But then again, friends, if you do some real searching, you may discover that what you once called nonsense turns out to be truth. And that truth can change you. The search for truth in my family began with this. I think you might find it interesting. In the year of our Lord, 1745, I, William Ashton, being of sound mind, do make this my, my last, last will, will and, and testament. testament. There is a spiritual unrest in the land. Beliefs are springing up and being heard. And many believe with others that the time has come when Christ will set up his church in this land. It's a true document, friends, found in a parish register in Lancaster. And there are hundreds more like this throughout our fair land. The freedom that William and others were seeking to learn of God and to worship him and to even know if he exists. It's something our people have been searching for, been hungering for for generations. It's part of what makes us who we are. However, for centuries, our people had no way to learn of God's plan for them. For the scriptures in English were outlawed. Without God's word, we were in darkness. Back in the 14th century, that was John Wycliffe's concern. Look, you call me a heretic because I have translated the Bible into the common tongue of the people? A century later, Anne Askew was burnt at the stake for defending the same cause. I had rather to read five lines of the Bible in English than to hear five sermons in a language I do not understand. And do we remember that those that were found teaching or simply reading the Bible in English were persecuted, like these parents from Coventry. You have knowingly taught the Lord's Prayer to your children in English and are therefore condemned to die. Burn them with their cherished Bibles. Burnt at the stake in 1519 for teaching their children the truth. And of course, there was William Tyndale of Gloucestershire if God spare my life, ere many years, I will cause that a boy who driveth the plow shall know more of the scriptures than thou. Tyndale believed that everyone is entitled to know God personally. And so he gave his all to translate the Bible into English. And by all, I mean he gave his life, offering these final words as he was bound to the stake. O oh Lord, open the King of England's eyes! But that was not the end. Another reformer, Hugh Latimer, said, as the torch was laid at his feet, We shall this day light such a candle in England as I trust shall never be put out. And they, and so many like them, were right, and their prayers were answered. For just three years after Tyndale's death, the great Bible was approved, making the word of God available in English for everyone to read. Let there be light. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. For through, in him we move and through live Tyndale, and have our being. We became a people of the book. And as the darkness began to lift, words of truth illuminated these lands. We could ask for ourselves and read what Christ's church should be like. And began to ask questions like, Hugh, like John Lathrop here in the 17th century. Who 
Who among us has the authority to baptize and act in Christ's name, as Christ's early followers did? Such authority, I fear, has been lost and will not be restored until new apostles are called by Christ, who is the head of his church. And like Peter and John of old, new apostles were called. Christ's church was restored as the Bible foretold. And the Lord sent one of his apostles here to England. This then is the story of our search for truth. It began with our first parents and continued with the reformers we have remembered and revered tonight. John Wycliffe, Ann Eskew, and William Tyndale and others. How grateful we are to them. They foresaw what would happen here, like George Wishart of the 16th century in Scotland. For here, in temples like this, families like ours, like George and Anne Cannon, families like mine, like, like my children and their children, and my mother and my father and my great-grandfather William and beyond, can be united eternally by the authority of God in bonds of everlasting love. This is our story, and it's the story unfolding here tonight. From Ireland to Idaho we come, not as strangers, but as members, one of another, fellow citizens in the household of God. Thank you. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to be gathered here this evening for this wonderful night full of inspiration and give gratitude to Thee for this wonderful school, American Heritage, that has been um, sacrificed to create and build up so that we can enlighten, inspire young minds and create humans that will be beacons of hope and a light to others in the world to um, inspire and uplift. And we know that we live in wonderful, favorable circumstances and give gratitude to thee for that. We ask a special blessing upon all those who teach and serve and inspire our children and our families and all of us. That they and their families will be blessed and we are grateful for their time and service in their hearts that they put into all that they do. We ask a special blessing as well upon the Earl Harding family as they mourn their loss and prepare for their services tomorrow that they will feel loved and buoyed up at this time. We look forward to a wonderful school year and um, pray that as we depart here we will do so in safety. We love you so very much and Pray for these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.